Yeah, Coach, just uh, how's it been so far getting the units together? I know y'all um, got a lot of work to do over the last cuts and stuff. Uh, it's been great. And guys have been incorporating our techniques and our uh, base concepts and fundamentals and, you know, putting together on film and getting the opportunity, one, you know, to practice, get back on the field, this training camp, get a lot of practices in uh, with joint practices as well, going against other competition and then, then getting those live reps and games. Those have been great for us and our guys continue to get better. And there's a lot that we need to improve on as well, but it's good to see the improvements. You, um, you got Cordell Patterson in your back pocket, but how's the, the other returners been doing and that, how's that competition going? You know, all the returners, they've been, you know, improving on the basic fundamentals, catch mechanics, understanding the new scheme and how we're blocking stuff up. Uh, so all those guys, including CP himself, they've been doing a great job of, you know, working at their, you know, basic fundamentals, whether it's catching the ball, you know, working their footwork, you know, getting vertical upfield on returns, break tackle ability, ball security. All those guys have been, you know, working at those those uh, basic tasks at hand. And the gunners. Um, you know, you got Keith Smith in your back pocket. Coach talked about how important the gunners are. How's that search been to try to find folks uh, for the coverage units? You know, Keith, you know, when it comes to punk, he's more of the protection. And then we're using him, you know, he could play on kickoff too. Uh, but when it comes to the gunners and the other, you know, speed positions, we're playing a lot of different guys. We're getting guys a lot of different looks at different positions and seeing what fits well so we could get all rhythm up going into the season. Scott? Uh, as you near this this big roster cut, how, how much do you have to kind of bang the, the table to Arthur and Terry just to make sure, and the, the guys who are making the cuts, to make sure that you get your core special teamers or, or just that you exercise your voice in guys that you really want there? Well, the best part about this staff and working with Terry and Coach Smith is that I don't have to bang the table. They, they value the importance of special teams and uh, maximizing our roster when we trim it down to 53. You know, those guys that are the fourth receiver, fifth receiver, maybe sixth, that fourth tight end, third tight end, those extra DBs that we carry, those they understand the, the value in that. You know, Terry coming from you know New Orleans and Coach Smith coming from uh, Tennessee, they both value special teams. So that part, they make my job easier because they, they see the importance in special teams and how it correlates with special teams being an extension of our offense and defense or putting ourselves in better position offensively and defensively. How, how, how vital is it to have guys in the locker room who understand the value of what you do. You, uh, you mentioned Keith Smith and Eric Harris have a lot of experience being on all four teams and uh, just, just kind of having, uh, you know, guys in the locker room kind of preach the importance of that to these younger guys that you're going to be reliant on to execute. Yeah. You know, that's a great question. I think it's, it's great and it's very important because you, you named those players, Keith, you know, Eric, you know, Cordell, you know, those guys, they they've made a living playing special teams and that's how they got into the league. So it's pretty cool to see um, their, their living stories. So their examples, they lead by example in the meeting rooms. They, they show it on video from history of them playing in the NFL. You know, Eric Harris, 2016 was his first year in the NFL and the guys watched him make three plays uh, in three straight preseason games, make plays. And that helped him get on the roster in New Orleans. And now, you know, he is where he is now. So that helps seeing guys live by example, play by example. And then still to this day, guys like Brandon Copeland and like you said, Eric, they still value special teams because that's what helped them get into the NFL. Michael, did you have Eric talk to the younger guys about that in some way? Like, is that a conversation that happens in special teams meetings? Uh, yeah, our, 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 our meetings, you know, they're player driven too. So we leave it open where it's not, not so just, you know, myself or Coach Hoffman you know, teaching the players, but we allow the players to speak in those meetings because, you know, peer to peer growth and accountability is huge in our room just because of they've been in those shoes. They've been like as those younger players and they understand the importance of special teams and they're in a position as servants where they can help guys understand the ups and downs of playing those special teams and avoid those landmines before those rookies get into those positions. So they try to help them grow from their experiences and put our younger players in better positions. For you, because obviously this is your first year as a coordinator. Yes, sir. Full, full time, full year. Yeah, full time, <laughs> appreciate that. And for you, what's the right amount of core special teams guys that you feel like you need to have? You know, I don't have a, fi we don't have a fixated number. You know, um, Every guy will have a role on special teams on this roster, and it just varies whether it's you know directly or indirectly. So we don't really put a fixated number on that. 
It's all about the fit for what we're doing each particular week versus various schemes, ver versus various offense and defenses, and how we could complement our offense and defense in that aspect. So there might be a guy that's one phase one week, but he might be four phases the next week based on his role. And that's why we, you know, it comes down to the basic fundamentals, guys understanding the schemes, keeping the menu small for our guys so we could plug and play guys in different spots. Hunter, what do you need? Because I think that's something that most of us have no real concept of. Mm -hmm. What do you need to see to make that decision between Dom and Cam? Just continual growth. You know, continual growth, uh, applying what they're learning from the meeting rooms, you know, what we're taking in individual drills and team sessions and continue to apply it within game-like situations. And, you know, whether it's game-like situations at practice versus a rush or, you know, these past two preseason games and this third one coming into Cleveland, I think those things are critical. And, you know, the overall ability to be able to, you know, do their job at a high level and be consistent with that. With a guy like Avery Williams, I think when he was drafted, it was one of those things that you just turn on his tape and immediately you're like, this sticks out. What he does in our turn game sticks out. For you, what, if, what are some things that he's worked on that you've wanted to see him, you talk about continual growth, what is it you want to see him continually grow in? Uh, just continue to um, you know work on his basic fundamentals. You know, he's played, he you know walked on at Boise State, played defensive back. Uh, he's he had a great career as a returner at Boise State. Um, but again, the NFL is different. So getting the opportunity to make the most out of every rep that he gets on the field, whether it's in the return game or in the coverage game. And he has a lot of growth and a lot of improvement that he can still work on, and he knows that. And you know, one thing that he's doing a great job of, he's coming in early, staying in late, working on those basic things. But um, he's been doing a great job, and I'm excited you know, for him and his future, whatever that may be. But he's working on his craft every day, and it's good to see him you know, improve every day. Yeah, we, we do want to be aggressive, uh, but part of being aggressive with our physicality and our approach to the game, we still have to be disciplined with our techniques and understanding the rules. So there is that, that line that we, we're at where we're being disciplined, um, we're understanding the rules and the situation that we're in, but at the same time, if we know those things, we could be aggressive with our fundamentals and our technique. And again, we want to be the hammer, not the nail when it comes to whether we're covering or returning. So we want to take that approach and help our offense or defense in any way possible. Michael. Yeah, go on, we'll go back to the weekend a little bit. Avery Williams took a few out from like six, seven, eight deep in the end zone. Was that planned to say that you were looking for looks or was that him making that decision or was that? That, you know, was, that was planned, you know, again, it's preseason. You're guaranteed each game in, the, in the, any season, you know, each game you're guaranteed a kickoff and a kickoff return. That's what you're guaranteed. You don't have one at the beginning of the game and at the beginning of the second half. So we only get better with reps on special teams or in offense and defense. In general, you only get better with reps. So the opportunity for us, you know, to take a couple of returns out, you know, based on given games, maybe, maybe not, but we wanted to evaluate not only our returner, but the other 10 guys that are on the field, you know, set for them blocking. If we take, if we take, if we don't cover kicks in the preseason, how can we evaluate our offensive skill guys that are running downfield that have never played on special teams before, or vice versa, our defensive skill guys that might have never been in a position to block in space. So those are opportunities for us to evaluate our roster and get the most out of you know every rep. Some of that too, I mean, Cordero throughout his career has, uh, I don't know how many times he's actually taken a touchback when he's been able to actually catch the ball. Mm -hmm. Like It was part of it that too, of just like, if he gets it seven or eight deep, he's more likely to take it out than maybe some other returner. Well, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Um, but it was an opportunity, I know, for preseason for us to evaluate our roster. The, the 11 guys that are on the field, the, the returner plus the 10 blockers, is an opportunity for us as a staff and organization to evaluate those players. Because you never know. You might find a guy because he makes a key block on a play. And if we would have take taken a touchback or if we didn't cover that kick, we would have never found out or given that player that opportunity to you know, base our decision on why he should be on the team. Hey, yeah, Coach, I know uh, I was with Terry and Lake Charles when the Mingo situation was going down. How big of a loss is that, you know, given his history as a, a special team guy? I mean, any loss with a, you know, you get a, a core player and, and 
on special teams is a loss, but it's next man up mentality here. The guys have been doing a great job filling in on in particular roles, whether it's you know preseason rig or you know, training camp practice. If a guy goes down, if he's banged up, it's next man at mentality. We're taking advantage of those opportunities as a staff. And I know our players are doing a great job of just being controlling what they can control and being prepared before the opportunity presents itself. So then when that opportunity does present itself, they can answer the question, go to bed at night. I was prepared and I was ready to go out there and execute at a high level. Anything else? Yeah, just uh, go, going back to the, to the punter competition, how much is health complicated that in with, with Sterling who, you know, was here and way injured. Dom hasn't been able to punt very much. Is that kind of made it is that clouded things for you at all or no, um, the, you know, both punters, they've been, you know, working their butt off, you know, when it comes to, you know, in the classroom, meeting room, how they're, you know, handling the situations at practice, being able to punt at practice, multiple periods at practice, you know, we might have one guy punt one period, one guy might punt the other period. We've been fine that the injury, we, you know, injuries, one, I don't discuss, that's not my role to discuss those injuries, but when they've been on the field, they've been handling their opportunities to punt and doing a good job with it. And again, they have a lot of room to approve. So I'm excited for both guys when it comes to this opportunity. Another punting question. Um, how do you all evaluate the directional punting and you know hang time on you know when you want different things out of uh, both of the punters? You know, directional punting, you know, the more direction you get, you might lose distance and you might gain hang time. So it's a combination of those three you know, distance, hang time, along with the direction. So, you know, for us, we, we, you know, most teams, they want a directional punt, you know, to pin guys in certain corners, but that's going to, you're going to lose something, whether you lose hang time or you lose distance. So just finding that good combination to help court, coordinate and correlate with our coverage units and our gunners, just giving our gunners opportunity to go make plays. And, but at the same time, you can back it up a little bit more. We got to do a great job of protecting to our, punter could do their job at a high level and then we could transition to that coverage phase so to answer that question it just depends on the combination it has to be a good combination of all three all right appreciate you guys all right. Thank you. appreciate Thanks, you guys Thanks.